So the first thing is I wanted to show you guys uh, some cool tools that I found that I have used uh, over the last couple years that have really helped me out with electrical. This is the first one, and this is a ratcheting uh, wire cutter. It's an easy way to cut very large size wire. For example, here I have a zero gauge, and then you close this part over the top of it, and you can see you could fit a monster wire in there, right? And then it, it basically ratchets, so all you do is you slide the top down to where it's snug, and then you just squeeze it like this, and it just ratchets, and it slowly cuts the wire, Boom, until it cuts it all the way off. You can see that. And uh, it's a nice clean cut. You guys don't have to worry about having like loose ends or having a weird jagged surface. I've used many different types, but I find that this one with the ratchet style, it's the easiest on your hands. Uh, it really multiplies your cutting power pretty easily. These are definitely cool, I definitely recommend them. This is kind of unique. And so basically what it is, is it's almost like um, it's almost like a scissor, but it uses uh, replaceable razor blades. And so it gets you a really clean straight cut, but then you, uh, when it gets dull, you can just swap out the blade with a new one so you can have a really fresh, sharp cut every time. So I'll show you guys, I use this one for heat shrink. Or also you could use it for loom. So loom or heat shrink. You know, either one, you just cut it like a regular pair of scissors. Boom, like that, right? Nothing, nothing fancy. See that? Look how easily it cuts. The other piece just shoots right off. Boom. <laughs> and then when it's done, you just loosen uh, this screw here. And you can take the blade out and just swap it with a new razor blade. And then I like using these razor blade items because you can get like you know, a hundred pack of razor blades for like 10 bucks. So it's a, it's a nice way to just have always a sharp cutting surface uh, at a low, pri low, low price. So anyway, I definitely recommend this, the uh, razor blade cutter, it's a really cool tool. So I get to use my favorite uh, wire stripping tool. There's not even a brand name on it, I don't know, it was like 10 bucks. But this one's really cool, it'll strip, uh, let me see if you guys can see it. Really big wire all the way down to small stuff. And this thing is so easy. Check out how this works. So all you do is there's a little uh, a little blade on the inside and that's what, what cuts the wire. See it right there? So here we go. You just put the stripper down the piece of wire according to how much insulation you want to cut off. And then all you have to do, look how easy this is. You just spin it. You just spin the little tool around the wire. I'm literally using one finger, right? Spin it like that a few times around. Remove it. And bam, pulls right off. Super easy. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to crimp large gauge wire. Uh, the little stuff like 12 gauge or 16 gauge, you know, hooking up an outlet or a cigarette lighter, a USB charger, that stuff's pretty straightforward. But when you get into the big cable, like the zero gauge or the four gauge, or even the eight gauge, uh, you gotta have different tools. This is the Temco TH0006. It is a hydraulic wire crimper. And so this is, this is basically the really good version. I got it, I still didn't pay too much for it. I got it for like a hundred bucks on eBay. But if you guys just want something cheap, they, Amazon has a knockoff from China that's like 40 bucks and you know, it basically is the same thing. I just, you know, I'll be doing electrical work probably until I die, so I like, I like to buy, I like to buy good quality tools. Okay, so when you get the set, whichever one you get, the good one or the Amazon one, it'll come with all these little inserts, they're called dies, but basically, um, but depending what size wire you're gonna crimp, whether you're gonna crimp zero gauge or four gauge or eight gauge, you can just pull these out like that, and then you can put in whatever size you need. So this happens to be zero gauge, that's the wire I'm crimping, and that's the thing that I use these for last. So that's the one we're gonna use. This guy's ready to go. We have a little wheel here. 
Uh, this one, if you turn it all the way to the left, that basically just unlocks it. And then if you turn it all the way to the right, that locks it and that allows you to crimp it. So we got this guy all ready. Uh, you want to start with it in the locked position. And then you also will need a ring terminal. So this is also, again, a zero gauge ring terminal. And so the way we're going to crimp it is you'll take the wire and you want to twist it a little bit and make sure that there's no like loose strands or anything, no uh, random wire splintering off. So that's kind of a nice clean twist. And then you'll take your, uh, your ring terminal and just slide it right over the top. And then again, you want to make sure when you put the ring terminal on that you don't get any little hairs that stick out because sometimes they won't all want to go in. So there we go. That's nice and clean, nothing sticking out. So that's kind of what you want it to look like before you crimp. So it looks pretty good. It goes all the way up. The metal basically touches the rubber. There's no gap in between where you see, you know, it's not like this where there's copper wire showing, right? It's a solid fit. So that's set up good, ready to roll. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just take the crimper. We're gonna slide the wire inside. And then what I do is I try to hold everything like this. So I have one finger holding the ring terminal because it can have a tendency to want to slide out. And then my other fingers are holding the wire and then I'm using my left hand to pull the trigger to make the crimping action. So all at once, we're just gonna go, and this is also ratcheting. So we're just gonna go ahead and just pull it like this. Boom, boom, boom. And you'll feel it once it starts to get tight. And it is really easy because it's a hydraulic crimper. Uh, it uses like an oil inside. So it's really, you don't have to have a whole lot of hand strength, even though it's like this monster wire and the tool's really heavy. Uh, but you know, even if you're a smaller person or a, not as strong of a person, uh, you won't have any trouble using the tool. So basically you just want to run it down until the two dies touch. And you can see right here, once they're touched, uh, or touching, then you're good to go. And then all you have to do is you turn the wheel like this, and then you can see right away that it just springed open. So now it's opened up, ready to go. And so now we'll take a look at it. And there it is. You can see the crimping. Uh, it gives you this really positive uh, face on each side. So it really squishes that metal down and makes a tight fit over the copper. Now this one, uh, once I crimped it, you can see there's like a little bit of a gap there between the metal and the rubber and that's fine. You know, we're gonna go ahead and heat shrink it anyway. So you're not gonna see that and it's gonna be all sealed up. Um, so sometimes when you're crimping it, you know, it'll, it'll slide a little bit. But otherwise that's a really, really good crimp, really solid. Uh, always just go ahead and give a little tug on it. Just make sure it doesn't slide off or move. It shouldn't move at all. And this is like really, really solid. So that's a good crimp. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Both sides of the cable are crimped. And so now what I'm gonna do is add that wire loom and then I'm gonna add the heat shrink as well. And that'll be kind of the tutorial on one complete uh, cable set. And then you can always make however many you need, whatever size you need. So now I'm moving on to the wire loom. Typically, uh, your hot wire is gonna be red and then your negative wire is gonna be black. <laughs> But on this setup, I'm gonna use this stuff uh, just because it's kind of cool. I've had it for a long time and it totally matches the Time USB colors. On this setup is that on the very end of the cabling, I'm going to have different colored heat shrink. So on the positive terminals, I'll have red heat shrink. And then on the negative terminals, I'll have black heat shrink right at the end. So that's the way that I'll be able to know just visually and verify which is which. We got the cable and we're gonna use this sweet stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed it on. You can see all those little um, like strands that are kind of just poking off. This loom is made out of nylon so when you cut it, it like all these strands come off. So it can be hard to then uh, fit the heat shrink over the top. 
So what I'm gonna, what I figured out is if you just put a little electrical tape on it, then it'll hold down all the strands, and then you can slide the heat shrink over it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Go like this. Like that. Okay, cool. Now check that out. See now there's no strands poking out. And then take your heat shrink, and this is where we're gonna use the cool uh, razor blade chopper. And so I'm gonna cut it about here. Boom. Okay, so then we'll just slide that over like this. And this is the negative battery cable. Again, that's why I'm using the black. So we got it like that. So that's what it looks like. So you basically want, you don't want the heat shrink on this surface because this is where it makes contact with your terminal post. So you never want that to be heat shrink. So typically I bring mine, um, you know, kind of right to the back here, which is where there's not gonna be any terminal, terminal touching. So. We'll put it about there. And then you'll need a heat gun. Show you guys what that looks like. If you've never done heat shrink before, it's kind of cool how it just contracts down like that. So there we go now. You can see the ring terminal, the heat shrink, and the wire loom. It's all good to go. And then now we're gonna do the other side. Blade, scissors, boom. And we'll put that one over the top. Why not take the time and do it right, you know? There's only a couple wires you have to make, so why not make them really nice and make them look good and do it the right way and then know that it's gonna last a long time and you don't have to worry about it. And then when you show your friends your van, it's like, oh wow, everything looks clean and neat and organized and it's not like a big, big rat's nest of wires, it's not a big mess. And uh, if you ever go to sell your van, people will appreciate um, that everything also looks organized and tidy and well done. And it's just, all around, it's just a good, a good practice, so. So there we are. So this is gonna be the negative terminal. So we got the, boom, check that out. The ring terminal with the heat shrink, with the wire loom. Yeah, baby.